So hi guys, uh, welcome everyone, and thanks for giving this stage to me. Uh, firstly, uh, good morning or evening, uh, whatever as per your time zone. It's very confusing to me from last two days. Uh, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, DCGVR team for developing this awesome metaverse for us. It's really amazing, and uh, they have really worked hard on every detailing I can see around, like, like the posters, the screen, the attendance areas. everything seems fine to me so uh, now coming back to the topic i'm going to present uh, on modern dos attacks with a few case studies uh, which i have encountered during my research so it will be a, a comprehensive guide that uh, explores the various types of denial of service attacks and the latest technologies that attackers are using these days to attack the application which can even evade the uh, web application firewall okay so uh, i'll start with myself uh, by introducing my uh, briefly so currently uh, i am working as a security engineer in qolfit uh, better known as qolfit uh, okay so uh, where i mostly leading the pen testing team uh, and look around for the security in uh, our web application or mobile application basically on the application part and my in my spare time uh, i used to hunt on organizations which has uh, bug bounty programs and do my research on uh, research work on those websites especially on social media you can find me uh, anywhere at uh, abi unix handle i use almost same uh, i use the same handle almost uh, everywhere so uh, now coming back to the outline uh, <clears throat> so uh, firstly i just want to confirm that uh, this presentation is ideal for uh, all kind of security professional bug bounty hunters or anyone who is a it manager or application developers who want to stay up to date with the latest trends in the uh, denial of service attacks and learn a uh, very effective strategies for defending the, uh, against them so uh, here the attendees will uh, leave with a deeper understanding of modern dos attacks and practical solutions to mitigate the risk of such attacks so these are the outline where uh, initially we will talk we will see some basic details uh, and previous research done on uh, like uh, dos attacks like C uh, cp dos and what are their kind and then i will cover a uh, little bit of previously known uh, application level dos attacks and then we will head on to the logical dos attacks where i'll be covering a few case studies okay so before uh, start we should uh, i guess everyone in our field must be aware of the denial of service attacks it's uh, like uh, like attacking third pillar of our uh, ci triads like uh, availability which uh, if you will see uh, definition wise then uh, wikipedia says that uh, a denial of service attack is a attack where the attacker seeks to make a resource or any machine uh, unavailable for the intended uh, users and if you we'll, uh, see the definition from the cert us then they say that uh, the attacker simply flood the target or the host uh, targeted host or the network with a large quantity of uh, request bombard it and simply crash the server so uh, both have their own perspective of seeing the denial of service attacks but in application wise if you'll see uh, then we can uh, create a new definition uh, like uh, as we can see in the, the third para like any functionality or any uh, feature which an attacker is able to disrupt then that could be that should be considered under the denial of service attacks so it's not like uh, flooding a lot of uh, request or bombarding the request to, uh, to server to crash crash down the machine or anything so there should be some logical ways to do it we will see in the coming slides so uh, before uh, going those areas uh, let's see like what are the unintended dos attacks and what are the intended dos attacks so uh, simply if we'll talk about the unintended dos attacks like uh, it's like not intentional to do the dos attack like we can uh, we have seen that uh, there was a website uh, still there, there is the stash dot uh, news website uh, that there was a uh, this internet website where uh, people can use we uh, post the news stories and like uh, used to do comments or uh, like on that uh, particular site so if uh, that if for some post it uh, the 
post got uh, get viral then uh, it it gets a lot of use traffic to the website and the uh, like application owner or a server uh, does not prepare for it like uh, i can hit get a hit of uh, such large request so it will uh, start consume uh, like consuming all the cpu uses and uh, it will uh, crash the server so it was not uh, intentional like people were not intentionally doing it to crash the server but somehow it becomes a denial of uh, service attack said uh, like it impl uh, imply creates uh, such attack like so uh, to get rid of uh, such things uh, such attacks like uh, we we can simply increase our servers uh, uh, resource value and uh, get rid of those attacks but uh, then we uh, we have this intended dos attacks uh, where here the attacker intentionally carry out the, the attack on the network website or any online resources uh, that is uh, legitimate uh, that is used for the legitimate users so uh, now uh, at this moment of time like attacker will intentionally uh, try to uh, crash down the server so the real user or the legit user cannot be uh, should uh, cannot be able to use that site for even uh, hour or some kind of uh, like a month or a year or so so uh, now we'll uh, start with the previous research that we have, we have seen in the uh, uh, hui luigi and uh, hanaus have uh, previously presented on cpdos attack in acm css in 2019 so i'm just going uh, going to give a quick recap uh, like how uh, these were working so we will get uh, some idea like uh, about the application uh, level dos attacks so here uh, we uh, everyone know that uh, cache is uh, what's the main purpose of the cache server so uh, here the uh, main primary purpose is to increase the uh, data retrieval performance by uh, by reducing the need to access the underlying slower storage layer like it will uh, keep some of the common files onto the cache server and then serve it uh, without going to the origin server uh, every time if some uh, user tries to uh, request the same page again and again so uh, it comes like a uh, very handy for like reducing the uh, time Uh, to like fetch some data but still uh, at the same time we got introduction of some uh, vulnerabilities as well so here in the cache poisoning dos attack uh, we can see here that <clears throat> the in the first image uh, we can see the first request a uh, user is just uh, i mean uh, as an attacker here the uh, attacker is just sending the request with uh, index dot for index dot html uri and given um, let me see. turn on the yeah so here we can see that uh, the attacker has crafted the, this request with the malicious header x malicious header and some value and then <coughs> send, send send it to the uh, trying to send to the server so it will first pass on through the cache server uh, where it will see that uh, i don't have any uh, storage like uh, any record for this particular request so it will again ask to the main uh, origin server like uh, what will be the uh, response for this uh, particular request so application will try to, uh, server will try to parse the request and uh, try to generate a response for for it so it will see that uh, there has been some malicious header uh, like which the server will not able to uh, parse it so it will send back uh, error like a 400 bad request to the uh, cache server so cache server will again uh, take a copy of it and keep it to itself and send the same response to the uh, attacker like in the fourth request uh, you can see so after that like when a legitimate user is trying to get the same uh, page index.html from the uh, origin server from that website so it will uh, first hit to the cache server and cache server will see that uh, there is a response uh, which has been associated with that uri Uh, it will directly serve it to the uh, legit user uh, which will show us uh, which will show the 400 bad error uh, bad request so here uh, the client i mean uh, the attacker has 
created that uh, malicious request and now the this uh, legit user is getting uh, impacted for uh, that malicious header just because of this cache server so so now uh, similar in a similar way uh, they, uh, they have categorized this cache poisoning attack in uh, three cat mainly category uh, header over size and meta character and next we will see so firstly i am going to cover http header over size uh, where uh, you can see the concept is same uh, here the main problem is uh, with the header size <clears throat> like see uh, uh mean uh, mainly we can see that the http request contains like a lot of information for the application server to understand or uh, the client to understand so uh, here like in if you'll read the http rfc then you will not find any uh, standardization for like uh size of the request headers like uh, what what could be the uh, header size like uh, it cannot exceed uh, the 10 uh, kb or uh, 90 kb or something so this like uh, creates a gaps uh, between a web server and a, a client like what exactly should be the standard size so like uh, we we can see that uh, many web server like http uh, apache httpd provide a header size limit of uh, 8192 bytes and if you'll see around the uh, amazon cloud front cdn then it provides uh, 2480 bytes 20 kb approx so uh, due to this uh, non uh, standardization system the http request header size uh, can be exploited to conduct a cache poisoning attack uh, which can lead to again a denial of service attack so here in the first uh, first picture we can see that uh, the attacker is trying to uh, put a header with a very large value and then send it to the uh, cache server I mean, he is just trying to send it to the origin server, but it will first face the cache server. So cache server uh, will have a large number of, uh, like uh, the cache server has configured with the with accepting a large number of uh, header size, but at the same time, server is not uh, configured for that much of uh, lengthy request. So first, uh, it will the cache server will not uh, do anything it will just uh, pass on the same request uh, big header request and send it to the main origin server and uh, origin server will not able to process it so it will say that uh, header size has been exceeded and again send it to the cache server and cache server will keep a copy of it and send it back to the uh, attacker attacker's machine so at the same time if uh, next time any legit user is going to uh, request for the same uh, same page then uh, he's start getting error for like uh, 400 bad request so uh, this will like again causing the with the same uh, cache poisoning we have seen uh, the root cause was that and with the oversized header we can also uh, create the same scenario so for the uh, invoice we can see here uh, i have kept around uh, 90 more than 90 bytes of uh, header size and it shows that the 431 uh, status code like uh, request header size fire field too large so now uh, coming back to uh, http meta character here we uh, we can see that uh, the attacker is simply using uh, special uh, characters uh, in uh, in the header and then passing on to the sa uh, same to the origin server so again, the uh, cache server will not do anything and it will s simply send the same request to the server. Server will not be able to uh, parse it and send back again with the error, error message. And same will be uh, stored on the cache and send it back to the client. And if the legitimate user is trying to access the same thing, then it will start, they will start getting the 400 bad request. Similar to uh, that, we have seen one more uh, test case for that cache poisoning again uh, that we call http method override so here uh, the problem with the with, uh, was that like um, most mo uh, mainly most of the cache server like uh, any intermediate proxies or load balancer does not provide uh, some of the methods like they mo mainly 
uh, were built to process the get and post request but uh, they were blocking like uh, delete or put so to overcome those uh, restriction like uh, few framework have introduced a new uh, header called like xhttp method override so if we will uh, put that header uh, in the request then uh, cache server will not do anything but server will understand uh, okay the this request the next request is uh, for the post request and it will again show you the error so similar thing going to happen uh, as we have seen previously like uh, again a copy of the response will be stored in the cache and uh, same response will be sent back to the client so if legitimate user is going to request for the same page then they will start getting 404 or 400 or some kind of bad request so uh, these were the previous research and now uh, we have seen some known application level dos attack as well like email bombing or billion law of attack uh, in the uh, email bombing like attacker were sending a lot of uh, emails by taking the advantage of the uh, not not rate limited on that particular request for example resetting the password or uh, getting a sign up email so they have sent a lot of uh, emails to the victim and just consuming the resource so these uh, these are the known attacks that we have uh, already seen email bomb and binel of attack where uh, where uh, it was uh, one of the part of xxc attack where the attacker were uh, taking advantage of uh, parameterized uh, ddd and creating a lot of uh, uh, parsing errors uh, to the server and uh, get denial of service attacks then we have seen the zip bomb attack where we try to create a zip of a very large file with a similar character and then send it back to the server and when server tries to decompress it then it will just crash and we have also seen some like uh, uploading very large files uh, at, at some point like uh, it cannot handle the request of such large files and uh, it crashes so uh, now uh, a days a very good uh, things we have uh, we are seeing like in the logical manner like how uh, attackers are using it uh, as we have seen uh, many times like long password or long string dos attacks where uh, uh, i will cover uh, go, going to cover all of these uh, long password dos attacks and uh, some complex calculation how uh, the attackers are crashing the server and some uh, one test case i am also going to cover like improper captcha implementation and there was also a scenario where uh, i have found a access control issue that i have converted that particular access control issue to a denial of service attacks so we are going to see that those one by one so firstly a uh, long string dos attack or uh, you can uh, see that uh, here the attacker what will do or what they will do is just uh, create a large number of uh, like put the value of any parameter in the request with a very large number like 10000 or maybe 20000 or 50000 and just uh, send the same thing to the server and if that particular parameter is being used somewhere at the server side and trying to do some process with it like uh, if you will see uh, at the time of sign up many of the application uses hashing algorithm or any encryption kind of thing then uh, at the server side uh, it will try to uh, hash it or encrypt it and if you are sending a large number of uh, value then again uh, it will take a lot of computational time so if you are doing same similar thing with the uh, with the threading then definitely uh, it is it is going to crash the server cause it will not be able to process that so uh, to identify that uh, simply uh, you can uh, send a large number of uh, value for any parameter and compare the response response time if the server is not responding properly uh, then definitely that's a kind of a denial of service attack again so remediation we will see uh, later on also and i have attached a link for the hacker one, hacker one report that similar kind of thing we have seen in the uh, cloud next cloud where the, the researcher was reported that uh, they have given a, a large number of uh, values to a password field and the server was crashing 
then we are going to cover this uh, complex calculation uh, like we have seen uh, in many e-commerce website when we try to purchase any product then uh, for uh, single quantities uh, there is some mrp and for uh, if you are increasing the quantity then uh, the calculation will happen and then it will uh, show you the latest price with the like based on the quantity so it's simply based on that uh, i have found the the same thing in my uh, uh, during my research in my own uh, company culpit where uh, you can see here that uh, there was a, a page where we can pr purchase a live products that's a home workout and the price of uh, for for home workout was uh, 1149 so when i was sending uh, the request for a single quantity then it was showing uh, some uh, like calculating at the server end 1149 uh, for the quantity of 1 and into 1 like uh, what whatever the quantity we are mentioning and you can see here uh, the response time of the from the server was 202 milliseconds now what i have done here is just increase the quantity and while increasing the quantity you can see like uh, again the server will try to uh, get the final uh, mrp of that product by multiplying the number of quantity into the price of one product so that uh, in this case that was 1149 so uh, when i have increased uh, the quantity from 1 to 129 the response time become uh, 4 431 milliseconds uh, then i uh, got a feeling like uh, there could again be the denial of service attack if such calculation are being done at the server end so again uh, i increase the quantity from like 129 to 129 and some 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 value so it will again uh, it is trying to calculate uh, at the server end with the per quantity value and it is again uh, increasing the response time from 200 something millisecond to 1700 uh, something milliseconds so similarly uh, when i try to increase the response time was keep getting increasing uh, uh, in a like exponential way so uh, with this like uh, attack we can simply again uh, send a lot of uh, threads not a lot of threads but still few threads and it will not uh, understandable by the web server like uh, with the web application firewall as well like uh, is it a legit request or not so it will uh, send it again to the main origin server and at the server side when uh, server is trying to calculate the quantity with the price then again it will crashes so that was uh, another of kind and then we will we are going to look at the improper captcha implementation uh, here uh, i was auditing a website uh, uh, that was a government website where i found that uh, they have used uh, captcha protection for brute force attack but uh, they were not using like uh, google captcha they were using some manual uh, captcha so after like uh, playing around uh, i discovered that the application was generating uh, like sending a, a particular captcha request uh, with with some parameter uh, t and there was some random value associated with that uh, you can see here the uh, uh, the uri so uh, when i was sending the that request uh, again and again uh, i was getting a captcha value and that captcha value should be used with the uh, login form like uh, username and password and if you are using like if if you are trying to log in and at the same moment uh, when someone from other device or uh, trying to log in then uh, the one who has uh, requested the web uh, login page recently will will be able to log in but uh, at the same time when someone uh, behind that timestamp will try to log in then uh, they will get a error so uh, here uh, i have taken a screenshot uh, of uh, how the scenario was working so here we can see that uh, there is a, there was a login admin panel uh, where there there is a three uh, input fields we can see email id password and verification code so the uh, process was very simple uh, the admin needs to enter the email address and password and verification code that we can see from uh, from the image so uh, intermediate uh, request i have uh, not taken the screenshot but uh, you can see the main 
uh, a screenshot for which the captcha was being retrieved from the server was uh, something like uh, at right uh, right read data uh, portal captcha images and some random dot gif with some value so it was not uh, meaning anything like you can choose any value and it was uh, responding the same way so what i have done here is just uh, trying uh, put the throttle of 5 second and uh, use the intruder to send the request at the same time when uh, now the login was something like uh, that when any user is uh, trying to log in uh, like request that web page they will uh, get a captcha and at the same time when my attack is in process then it will request for the new captcha so if uh, the for the previous user that captcha start expiring so it is of no use so uh, simply by writing this uh, one liner script uh, or uh, two line of a script you can see that uh, i am just re uh, requesting this particular captcha uh, uri uh, for infinite time and i can uh, just put a slip uh, slip value of 5 second or 3 second and then it will again uh, request for the captcha again and again and no legit user will be able to log in uh so here you can see here like uh, on that on this admin panel uh, i have given the correct username uh, email id and password with the correct value of captcha but uh, uh the server respond with uh, please enter uh, valid verification code just because uh, at the same time i have uh, started my attack and Uh, whenever like at the time when the the legit user was trying to uh, enter this captcha that uh, that was uh, expired already just because of my attack so this again creates a denial of service for the for the user like he, uh, they were not able to log in it uh, log in into the portal uh, because of this poor implementation of the captcha so uh, uh now we are just going to cover the access control issues that uh, which i have converted from it to denial of service attack so similar to uh, previous again uh, we have found uh, something different way to create this denial of service attack so i found this uh, on a website which was looking similar to this and we guys might have used we transfer uh, application to send file from uh, one computer to another computer or from one individual to another individual just a public sharing platform so uh, i found that there was an idor vulnerability and idor kind of vulnerability and then uh, it was also uh, sequential in nature so uh, just by simple script uh, i have created which i'll be showing uh, in the further slide uh, anyone can uh, stop the users from sharing any files through through that website and it start it starts throwing uh, something went wrong so we'll uh, going to see that uh, step by step how this attack was working so here i'm just going to give you a functionality issue uh, functionality like how the website was working okay so here we can see uh, we got few options like first is uh, drag and drop files where you can uh, upload the file which uh, whatever the file you want to share and then you need to put the email address of the receivers like uh, to whom the email is that that file is going to uh, send then your email address whatever is your email address then phone number and after putting the phone number you need to verify it uh, verify the otp uh, for that particular phone number and then click on share file it will share the file so here you can see that i have uploaded a file called testfile.txt and given the email address to uh, to the recipients and my email address at the uh, test@gmail.com and my phone number and at the and also the otp correct otp so uh, yeah uh, as you can see here the even the website is asking for otp still there was a chance to uh, create this denial of service attack we will see so uh, once you fill up all those details you can see here that uh, file transferred successfully and on the receiver's email you will see that receiver will uh, get this email 
saying that uh, get your files and when you click on that file the, the receiver will receive this uh, test file.txt so now uh, the problem start here is uh, there was a vulnerability on that uh, cross button where like if a user is just trying to upload a file and they have uh, wrongly selected a wrong file then there was a button of uh, uh, there was a cross button where you can just click on that and delete that file from the server uh, okay so when you click on that uh, cross button it generates a, a request to the server and the request was looking like something like this uh, there was a uri for that uh, removing the file and there was a file id parameter with some value like here we can see 489 so every time whenever you upload a file uh, we get a file id which uh, either you can you can have seen from the inspect element or from the response when we uh, we were uploading the file so uh, on deleting that uh, i have seen that uh, there was a file id this and then i try to again uh, send it to the uh, repeater and try to play around like uh, what if uh, whether it is uh like binded with some session or not then i send the same request uh similar request again with the with all cookies and all headers removed like whatever could have uh, been uh, recognized by the server for uh, any individual so uh, when i removed all those cookies and headers uh, still i can see that the server processes my request and giving given me the success so here I confirm that uh, it is not validating anything at the server end for any unique user or any individual user. So uh, firstly, I try to get like uh, confirm the IDR vulnerability itself. Like uh, I uploaded some file from another device and with another uh, browser and with the same file ID, I try to delete it from my uh, friend, like uh, let's suppose attackers machine. Then I was getting a successful response. Then uh, to exclude that from this access control vulnerability to like uh, denial of service vulnerability, where uh, my main aim was to like uh, keep on deleting the files uh, in every five seconds if it founds any uh, uh, file ID, and then any user will uh, would not be able to send the file across. So they will start getting uh, error. So I've just uh, created this uh, script. It might not be visible or you can just find the same script here. And I have done the, uh, here right, written down the flow, how this script was working. So uh, firstly, like uh, upload, uh, it was just uh, here. You can see the redacted.com remove share file function. So it was the main uh, URI that, that you have seen here and it was expecting some file id in the body and uh, whenever we we are sending that uh, request that that file id get removed from the server so simply uh, just you need to uh, download this this script and put uh, like some uh, file id parameter like once you have to upload it uh, here then get a file id from uh, inspect element or from the response and then with that script uh, you just need to put the file ID here. What it will do is just create a range from that particular file ID to next uh, th uh, 20, 20 uh, ID ranges. And then uh, it will start sending one by one uh, in a throttle of let's suppose two or five, five seconds or 10 seconds. And if it found uh, any uh, file ID, then it will again increase the count from uh, uh, next I mean, uh, the next, like uh, here, let's suppose the file ID was 310 and it found a file ID at 310, then it will, uh, the script will automatically readjust the ranges from 311 to 331. And I was doing the same thing with the thread. So uh, the one function was sending the request in an increasing manner and another function was sending the request in the decreasing manner uh, to catch the file like uh, as soon as possible. So once you will do that, uh, then like uh, here, uh, I have uh, just run the script with the file ID and you can see here the, it, uh, whenever any uh, legitimate user was trying to upload a file onto the server, then this 
script automatically deletes that file and uh, the server uh, the when uh, the user fill up all the details with the even with the correct uh, otp and all uh, the user were getting error like something went wrong please try again so simply uh, just by with this script uh, we have created escalated uh, attack which was simply vulnerable to idor and that was escalated to uh, denial of service attacks so what was the impact here as we have seen that uh, we were we have just stopped all users to use that uh, sharing functionality of that uh, web application and it was just making it unavailable for all users and saying the response as a something went wrong please try again so if you will uh, talk about uh, why such attacks are more dangerous than normal flooding uh, or bombarding with a lot of request so you'll we'll see here like uh, if in this request we are just sending this request and this is not malicious at all in any manner like no uh, with no web application firewall you can detect that this is a malicious request because uh, simply you cannot uh, protect any uh, application from idor with the, with a web application firewall so simply this is just uh, uh, very hard to detect it then uh, we have seen that uh, the request was uh, non malicious then again uh, it was again will be not easy to detect by the firewall and also if you will come to know such attack like uh, is being exist in our network even though we are we understand that okay this is the thing which are uh, happening but we cannot protect it from our end uh, with the use of uh, uh, firewalls so it's also a very big challenge to mitigate such issues so what are the solutions for it so as we, uh, we have seen that uh, no such uh, hard code solution we can find we can just simply uh, invalidate uh, validate the inputs uh, which are being accepted at the server side uh, from the client and then we can just uh, put a resource rate limit on any uh, particular application uh, like they cannot send a similar kind of request again and again and again so that that, that can also stop be stop and the uh, last method uh, i would say for as a solution is just get a security audit done by the Uh, to avoid such business logic flaws like idor or some other kind of vulnerabilities so with all those solutions we can just try to uh, improve uh, for, from getting our web application uh, uh, availability and just get things done similar uh, hypothetical scenarios if you can see like uh, there there are a lot of uh, web application which provide account deletion process so let's suppose uh, they uses a uh, account id kind of parameter and that is vulnerable to idor so any attacker can again create a script which is just sending that uh, rotating the uh, account id and sending a request again and again and if that application is uh, has no access control then they are that is just going to delete all the accounts uh, from the server so even if uh, some user is trying to register a new account and try to log in then again it will create a denial of service kind of attack so no one will be able to log in inside that application so such scenarios can be a very logical and it's hard to detect uh, as a firewall perspective and stop it so uh, this was all from my end uh, if you have any question then you can shoot up Uh, feel free to ask any questions if you have for, for Abby. Thank you, Abby, for that excellent presentation. Uh, that was very creative attack methods you found there. Yeah. Sure. So I'll take it as a no. And uh, if you people from the audience wants to connect, then I'm definitely available with username same uh, Abby Unix anywhere on the LinkedIn, Twitter, or formerly uh, formerly Twitter now X. instagram or anywhere we can connect it and references i have attached here and slides uh, i guess i will send it uh...